So folks, here we are sitting in the limelight and with us is Ranking Roger of The Beat. Hello. The man himself. Great. Thanks Welcome for having to Belfast. Me. Thanks for having me on the show. No, no that's Thank no you. problem. Great for you to have you back in Belfast. Um, as we were just looking at the poster there, December 2013. Well, now you're giving my age away. <laughs> we'll not even go, we'll, we'll no, not mention it's back, it's we'll not go back to yeah, the, right, the right, start then, yes, will we? Yes. We'll not go back. I haven't said that, you're looking very fresh for it. But then, but having said that, when we look, we look at all the, the two tone artists uh-huh. these days, and we had conversations with other ones about keeping yourself fit and. Yeah, and well, try, I mean, being on that stage keeps you fit, just yeah. that by itself. Yeah. Um, but I think out of all the two tone people, I, I work out that I was the youngest anyway. Well, you, I suppose how you. Because when, when the beat had the first hit, I was only 16. Is that right? So that's like, you know, yeah. Yeah. But, but Wikipedia will tell you I was 18. Oh, well. Because you had to be <laughs> 18 to get into the club, so we, we had to lie about my age and but say that. They can change it now. I've tried. They're they not going to it. I've sent them my passport, everything. They won't have it. <laughs> Birth certificates. I'm like... <sighs> but most people just change Wikipedia, don't they? Yeah, that's it. But we'll, have, we'll have to go on like, and we'll, yeah, we'll change right. it for you. We'll yeah, get it's 1963 we'll anyway. So what, <laughs> what, what was it like for you as a 16-year-old? Being, through, being in the middle of all that and the, the success and the top of the pops and very very chaotic whirlwindish um, and all the way through it I just had to remind myself of where I came from and my roots and to remain grounded because you know when you get famous right. people start to make you think you're more important than you are if I can mm-hmm. put it that way yeah. and you start believing it and that's, that's how you end up as a diva you know, if you're a realist, you will know where you come from and you will always remain grounded. Mm-hmm. Like, for instance, I know I'm getting off the subject, no. but, you know, my favourite people in time who I've met and shook hands with, and, you know, like Paul McCartney and not my, one of my favourite people, but, mm-hmm. you know, I met him the one time and he came up to me and went, all right, Raj, shook my hand uh-huh. and went, love your music, and I was like, you know my music, uh-huh. you know. You know, David Bowie, so down to earth he was, you know, really, really grounded. Yeah. Joe Strummer, Mick Jones, all of them, you know, it's just yeah. like Sting, exactly the same, down to earth. Mm-hmm. I learned from them people. You don't have to be yeah. the way they, people. They always seem to have that because yeah. if you read through some of the books, particularly, I'm just reading them in the middle of this sort of specials book you're wondering now and things like that. And they do get name dropped in there about how they've come along to specials gigs and all. And I think a lot of those people did love the two tone. Oh, yeah. yeah. Really loved yeah. it and were very keen to have people along. Uh huh, yeah. It was only maybe when they were upstaged <laughs> at the gigs that it. Well, you know, I mean, the thing Because it's quite well known that when a lot of the two tone bands came on there and they were maybe seen as support yeah. to some of those and then suddenly. Oh, yeah, these bands are we well, we, than we had it with the Pretenders, you know, we did the tour as the English beat, because that's what we were yeah. known as in America, and um, the first gig we just went down the storm, second gig was even better, third gig, it was like, by the third gig, we would, we'd never had a sound check for the rest of that tour, yeah. you know, we were treated really well for the first couple, and then they could see how we were reacting to the audience. Basically, I'm not saying we were stealing their audience, but yes, I can say we were stealing their audience. You were turning them. Uh, and I don't know who it was. I can't really say it was yeah. Chrissy Irons. So I can't even say some musicians. I'd have to say the road crew or the personnel made it really hard for us to get a good sound. And they started giving us half the PA and half the lights uh, and all that business. It. Oh, yeah. You know, so you do, you, you know, I have known it in the past, um, but. All us two-tone bands, the band, all the bands that were on, t- on two-tone, even though, you know, I don't believe the beat are a ska band, I believe we're a dance band, yeah. and I've always stated that, you know. Every single two-tone band or band that was on two-tone has always gone on and tried their hardest, because that's all we know. That's, mm-hmm. the, that's the state where we come from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, whether there's two people there or 2,000 people there, you still have to put in the same effort. That's the yeah. kind of belief, yeah. you know. Yeah. The next and leg over here, they... They put on the same performance they what is on if they were playing at Wembley. Yeah. That's what we yeah. 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 Uh, and like Pauline was no different from she was when she oh, went on New, Year, Paul, New Year's Eve. Oh, she's on yeah. New Year's Eve, you know. Yeah. But that, that's that's the whole philosophy. I we would we would all struggle probably struggle if if there was such a thing as a boring 
ska band. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't think that's possible to have a boring ska band because of the type of music it is. Um, so there, ca- there can't really be, and it's, it's just the philosophy of the music and the yeah. the fun. You know, some have different angles, as you say. Uh-huh. The beat has a, I think, is a unique in terms of the two tone yeah. era had that sort of. Uh, some, people will love, some people will love it. Uh-huh. Some yeah. people would go, oh, well, I would be more. But we all had that. Yeah. Well, why do you think the beat sort of did get sort of, as you said, you weren't a two tone band, got sucked into that two tone? Well, the first single came out on Two Tone, and then we went off and started our own label, which was called Gold Feet. Mm-hmm. And instead of being black and white, it was red and black, yes. which were to us going to be the new beat colours. And then the beat girl was there, which yeah. was ours as well. So it was, a, you know, we were, that who was likes, our way. Nice to dance to with Walt. You know, <laughs> yeah. It just stands out the minute you see it, just know it is. That's color, right, yeah, just, yeah. Um, and then the idea of that was, was to be a bit like Two Tone, but not as a, adventurous, more like to be able to put out, well, Two Tone put out what they wanted. They pull out their friends' records or what they thought was good. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. So, you know, we pull out a couple of local bands. One of them was the Mood Elevators from Birmingham. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, we pull out the Heart of the Congos by the Congos in Jamaica. We put right. that album out on Gold Feet because it was never released over here, you know. Right. Um, and, you know, we did a few things and plus our own albums as well, you know. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll, if anyone, we'll, we'll work with it if we can hear yeah. that in the back. So what was yes. your... Early influences what, in, in music. What was your? You grew up. Well, you were sixteen when you went into. Yeah, the thing. yeah. What was your? Before I would have said, the uh, the Clash, mm-hmm. the Sex Pistols, Big Youth, Dillinger. Um, I wouldn't re- really say Bob Marley was ever an influence uh-huh. to me. Uh-huh. I went for people like Burning Spear and Lee Perry and the, the yeah. underground side of reggae. You know what I mean? Not yeah. the commercial Lee side. Perry, so Lee Perry, Lee Perry still. Yeah, oh yeah, that well that's, that's where UB40 got their sound from, isn't it? From, if you listen to any Lee Perry record from 1976, you will hear UB40 sound in there already. Right. You know, so it's kind of, that space age dub mm-hmm. reggae, that, yep. you know, that came from Lee Perry. I think the best thing that could have happened to UB40 would have been if Lee Perry actually produced their first album. Now that would have been, you see, yeah. that would have made total sense yeah. then. Even though it was a great album, that's yeah. signing off. Yeah. And where were you, were you born and grew up? In Birmingham, yes. Birmingham. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, obviously, it, Birmingham was a great place until I was about 14 or 15. Then I started realising things like racism and the National Front and, you know, just things like that. Because I lived in an area called Stetchford in Birmingham, which was the headquarters for the National Front. Right. And they used to have marches up and down past my house all the time. <laughs> The funny thing is I'd, I'd often walk up the road, across the road with them for a bit just to see what they were all about, you know, and they, you know, they, did, they were never violent, but you know, they always used to have, you reading the signs and seeing, you know, blacks out and packies out and all that business, and I was just like, whoa, this is so, how can people be like that, what's this all about, you know, um, so it made me go back into history and start looking and you know, after the yeah. Second World War, England yeah. needed immigrants and, yeah. Yeah. you know, they came from the Caribbean and helped build the country up and now you want to send, you know, that kind of yeah. thing, send them back. Cause, yeah. um, but it, it's like another generation was born here and I came in that generation and so I belong here, you know. Um, so were you glad you to get into the band? And oh yeah, get, definitely. Get away, get away sort of. It was, it was a big ex- escape, but it was also... Um, it was also a chance to to say what you wanted as well. There was a freedom of speech then, which you, we haven't even got now. Nowadays, you have to watch how you say it. That's yeah. the best way I can put it. Um, but you were able to use the music as... We released it as it was. People got what we saw. You know, we saw, we saw war. So we were very anti-war and trying to promote peace, love and unity to the world, you know. We saw unemployment, so we told people about that. You know, we saw World War Three because in the eighties, early eighties, yeah. everybody was scared of World War Three and that it was going to happen. You know, the, the bottom was going to get. That's right, and, yeah. it, and it could happen at any time. So there was all that, all that fear was there. You know, um, you know. So we started bringing out things like Stand Down, Margaret, and that, and, and obviously we got banned from the by the BBC and stuff, and. 
a year later, I remember looking on the television on the news and seeing the women at Green and Common who were trying to get all the Trident missiles out of England mm -hmm. yeah. and also the miners who were on strike at the time. Uh -huh. Both in the same news thing, singing Stand Now Margaret, the chants. Yes. Yeah. And I thought, hang on, I think we've, you know, we've, we've, some, we've actually got through somewhere and we were working class music, just like the Clash were, you know, we kind of would like to see ourselves like that, you know. Okay, no problem. So, basically, Roger, we're, I know you're up to your eyes and we've got a big yes, gig tonight yes, and yes. we're all looking forward to it. So, um, the future, very quickly. Yeah, okay. Um, music, well, are you used been, stuff? Or, we've uh, been tell us, in tell the us studio oh, okay. working on some new stuff. Brilliant. And it's absolutely brilliant. I, mean, you know, I, I won't swear over the radio, but no. it's absolutely brilliant and wicked and I think beat fans are going to love it. I mean, I wish I could give you... I'll let you hear a bit after the radio thing. After you okay. do, but I can't okay. let you have yeah, it. No, no, it's no, just no, so no, we'll, we'll, we'll just studio. tease our listeners. Yes, really. right, we'll just yes, tease yeah. them a wee bit. <laughs> you can tell them about it after, but um, yeah. it's uh, you know it's going to come out hopefully in the summer. Super. And uh, look out for it. Yeah, because there is now. I know it looks like we're always doing a lot of the bands are now. You know, maybe we talked about the legacy of playing off it, but now yeah. I think bands are now realising let's get back out. Oh yeah, out oh, again, and it'll be great to see here. You see that the crazes are getting, and the people want it, and the people are enjoying it. Yeah. So do you feel do you feel there's another wave of it at the moment? Not necessarily, though. No. no. I don't. I don't think there's another wave of it at the moment. I think, I think people are interested in it and I think it's getting mixed and merged and, and you know, it, it, it might make it, it might bring it back in another way. Yeah. I think if it comes back, it can't come back in any of the forms it's been in before. Yeah. has to That's come on a, on a new wheel, if you know what I mean. And I wonder what that will be. You yeah. know. Well, have, have your favourite song? Your favourite beat song? My favourite beat song is... You're on a wee pool, you're on a wee pool, what was your Mirror favorite? in the bathroom. Right. Okay, that's what we have, to, we have to play in our next. Yes. Yeah, be yeah because we're also doing a, there'll be a wee bit of a coverage of the London Ska Festival, which I know you're mm -hmm. headlining in a couple of weeks' time. So I've got a few of the bands that we'll be supporting on the same, you know, yeah. over, over those in that number of nights and yourselves. So we'll play Mirror in the bathroom and we're going to ask you just to watch one you want to play. So we'll play you that one anyway. Yeah, brilliant. It's just on the beat at the minute, it comes on. Just... Oh, well, that's the, to me, that's the sound of the beat always but yeah. the first time I ever heard the beat that tune was the tune that made me fall in love with the band and I, I went that is the, the right combination it's it's like well I won't say punk and reggae it's like new wave and reggae yeah. mixed together and it's hybrid reggae it's not quite reggae but it's got something else yeah. it's got a bit of velvet on the ground in there or the key yeah. or I don't know what it is but it's got but it has that it has something that's but it has that beat that's thing timeless about it. You, know, you can you know it's you know when you listen to the other yeah. tracks. So, Roger, as I say, we'll we'll let you get on with it. Yes. Um, yes. Brad, you played along with Brad. Say that again. John, John Bradbury, you played along. Yeah, with we're going to mention yes, special yes. beat. Yes. Obviously, with special beat. Yes. Yes. Sad. Uh, very sad, and, and a sad loss. And the yeah. thing is, it was such a shock. You know, um, when well to everybody really because yeah. it was unexpected it wasn't like he was, was he wasn't ill or you know he was quite yeah. fit you know and quite a, a, a fitness fanatic really yeah. Work, you know, yes yes um but you know i went to his funeral and the best thing about it was to see well not all the specials but a lot of them were there and yeah. madness were there and i came and represented the beat and you know pauline couldn't make it but gaps was there for the selector yeah. and you know, so there was all the bands kind yeah. of showed something, and it was, you know, it was almost like a, you know, like yeah. brother, brothers in arms Special almost, you know. And, yeah. It was sad, but it yeah. was good to see the turnout, you know, all, all these famous people, if you like. You know. I think, yeah, too, great. maybe you think of the specials and Brad and everything, but when you hear the other the music stars talking about them, yes. not just yeah. the star, fans, yeah, yeah. He's on playing some yeah, other things, people, you know. They just think they've said to the drum. Yeah. Just, yeah. You know. uh, we did a show, the last show we actually did about, and we covered special beat and that there, a couple of live uh -huh. shows, which obviously you would. Actually, I think the two we did was Rough Rider and. We did the two beat. Right, okay. Do you, do you know the, that were cool, you? So cool, was cool. from your time in America, whenever you were. Yeah. Brought the ska back into America at that time with a special beat. Wow, that's wicked. Yeah, that's good. Uh, uh, yeah. Late 80s or early 90s yeah. or something. So. Uh, 
Yeah. yeah. Roger, thank you very much for Scott It's my Prius. pleasure. Um, um, it's a pleasure to have you back in Belfast. And, and we'll have to do it again. Oh, no. oh definitely. certainly, definitely get yourselves back over here so we can get another night out. <laughs> we need these night outs. Guess I, we guess a, a, he's a, he's a soil boys need a night out <laughs> right now. Roger, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and the best of luck tonight. Cheers.